Hey guys, Dion Taylor here. So this is part two in my series of videos about 2021 release wave one. And in this video, I'm going to talk about some of the new features for Dynamics 365 sales. So grab your popcorn, sit right back, and I hope you enjoy the video. So there is really not a lot to explain here, right? Because the title kind of says it all. So if your organization does not have the sales hub, the model driven sales hub app installed, uh, it will be pre-installed in the environments. It will only be visible to users with the following security roles, but this could obviously be changed if needed. So here you can see those roles, right? By default, system administrator, system customizer, sales enterprise app access, salesperson, sales manager, and VP of sales. Now, <clears throat> this feature is going to allow users to use column level filters to filter out opportunities in the underlying data of the forecast they're looking at. So when a user opens a forecast and clicks on any of the forecast rows to view the underlying records, they're going to notice this new filter icon that will be available. And then obviously when you click on the filter icon, you're going to see that filter pane opening on the right side uh, of the window, allowing us to, you know, add rows and groups and related entities to filter on and so on. Now, this feature is related to the items in the work list of the sales accelerator, and it will show more contextual information about the related record of a work item. So this means that if you're looking at a work item that is related to an opportunity, uh, you can see more information regarding that opportunity, right? Maybe opportunity name or something like that. And again, this is going to show up on that work list card. But if you're reviewing a work list item related to a contact record, you're going to be able to, for example, see more information related to that contact, like a job title field. So this is kind of what that looks like. You can see here on the left hand side that card, right, which in this case is related to a lead, but I also now get some additional information on that lead directly here in my work item card, as you can see. Now, since we're on the topic of work list cards, there's another feature that's related to these that I want to share. So before this release, we didn't have the ability to configure these work list cards, right, in the sales accelerator, which I felt was really something that we should have, right? So it looks like Microsoft felt the same way and added this to the application. Now, I don't know what this is going to look like, but I think this is pretty cool, right, that we're going to be able to configure these things. And these are some additional features related to the Sales Accelerator. And it will give users more options when it comes to activities and notes. Users can automatically update activity descriptions from the sequence step description if needed. And they can also add notes while marking an activity as completed from that control. They can also add a note directly from the up next widget or snooze an upcoming activity and then set a new date and time for when that activity is due. That's kind of what that will look like. Now, this one is pretty big news, right? The ability to experience sales accelerator, conversation intelligence, and predictive scoring with Dynamics 365 Sales Enterprise. So previously, none of those sales insights features 
were available when customers purchased Dynamics 365 Sales Enterprise. And if they wanted to access these features, there was an additional price tag associated with them. So with this change, Microsoft is bringing some of these capabilities to customers who own a Dynamics 365 Sales Enterprise license. I actually recorded a video on this topic, uh, which I'm going to post in the description of this video so you can take a look at that as well. But basically what it means is that right, certain sales insights features will become available for people that have that enterprise license, although it is uh, limited. So definitely check out that video as well. And then we have the forecasting and pipeline intelligence. Uh, and this is really a list of features that are related to forecasting and lead and opportunity scoring in Dynamics 365, giving users better insights into their pipeline. Now, unfortunately, most of the features in this list were not part of the early access features. So I wasn't able to try these out to kind of see how they work, right? But I am going to talk about this a little bit. So this first one, according to the documentation, this feature allows us to assign sales stages to attributes or fields or columns, right? Whatever you want to call those in the scoring models for opportunity or lead scoring. Microsoft will also allow users to view how these fields impact the scoring model at each sales stage. Then we're going to be able to compare annual projections with actual progress over multiple periods. And what that means, or what I think this means is that this is going to allow us to track projections on an organization basis, but also on an individual user basis. Uh, I think annual is the key word here, right? Uh, being able to track that on an annual basis. And then lastly, we also have streamlining your forecasting workflow with default experiences. Now, I like this feature because it allows system administrators to set some of the default behavior for forecasting. That's what this means. And this is great because obviously not every organization is the same, right? And therefore you should not have uh, the same settings for everybody. You should be able to set your own default forecast behavior. So some of the items that you're going to be able to configure um, are grouping by drill down, right? Or selecting the Kanban view as a default view instead of the list view when, when you're accessing those underlying records. Uh, and then setting the last viewed forecast or the last selected forecast as default. And then setting the default forecast configuration for users, obviously. Then there's going to be support for yearly forecast periods. And again, I think this is a great one as well, because before this release wave, we were not able to do this, right? We could only configure forecast for, you know, on a monthly basis or a quarterly basis. So with this update, we're going to be able to configure forecast for a whole year. And I'm assuming this is going to be multiple years, but again, I don't know at this point but a yearly forecast period will be added to that application. So again, I'm assuming that we're going to have the ability to, you know, configure that multiple for multiple years in a forecast. So here's another one that I'm excited about. Previously, if you needed to create or update the quota in a forecast, you needed to upload that Excel template, right? So with this update, we're going to be able to update our quotas directly inside of the forecast configuration by editing them in line. And it also looks like we're going to be able to configure if the quotas need to be rolled up from a hierarchy. So what that means is let's say you have three direct reports and all of those have a quota of $100,000. So if you then configure roll up for this, the quota as a manager would then be, right, that total amount, three times $100,000, uh, 
which is $300,000. So again, previously, you would have to enter this in that Excel sheet and then upload that into the forecast. But it seems with this new feature, we're going to be able to configure these rollups again directly into your, your forecast configuration. And then sales managers and obviously other folks with the right security will be able to edit those quotas directly in line in the forecast. Now, there's some nice updates that are coming to Sales Mobile this year as well. So the mobile features will go into public preview in August of 2022. So we have to wait for that a little bit, but I can talk about this, right? Even though I don't have access to it yet. So the first one is the ability to capture contacts from your mobile device, from your phone, and being able to add them to Dynamics 365 Sales with one click. So I'm sure you can see this is going to be a big benefit here, right? And another feature is the ability to log calls from a cell phone's recent call list. Now, I assume this will allow users to go to that last call list, and then you're going to have the ability to create Dynamics 365 phone call records. But again, we just have to wait and see until this goes into preview uh, in August. So. Today, users are able to create contacts from a business card by taking a picture of the business card on your mobile device, right? But with this release, we're going to be able to take a picture of any handwritten notes and then convert them into a note in Dynamics 365 sales. And we've seen this before, right? A while back, we actually had uh, the Dynamics 365 Assistant for Teams, which was in preview, and we had the same behavior there as well. Now, this one is a big one, and this one will be in public preview in April of 2022 as of now. So this feature seems to expand the who knows whom functionality tremendously, right? As you can see in the screenshot, the who knows whom section is now moved to a separate tab where users can see a lot of information regarding the relationship. So this is not just Dynamics 365 data, but it also leverages data from Exchange. Users will, will be able to see interaction scores that shows how their organization is connected to other organizations or contacts and you can also see how strong those relationships are. We'll also be able to see recent interactions and connected coworkers on this page as well. I hope you enjoyed the video and if you did, don't forget to hit that like button. Also, don't forget to subscribe so you'll never miss another video again. Thanks again for watching and until next time.